welcome to this broadcast. My name is Paul, I'm in Peter Reddy in Scotland. Glad to be here. Um, appreciate you tuning in today's broadcast. Today we're in Ezekiel 28. And a glorious journey it has been. Um, you know, the God of all encouragement knows how to give his children the tongue of the instructed that they might have a word to speak to those that are weary. Um, so if you're listening to this message and you're under the weather, um, perhaps you've got, you're depressed, having low mood, um, perhaps you're going through different circumstances, ill health, financial problems, family problems, you know, stay in prayer, more prayer, more power, uh, worship and thank God. Be thankful for the atonement, for the holy sufferings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is the secret to Christianity, really. Um, if you went in a man's house and completely ignored his son, you wouldn't be in the house very long. And so it is. So be thankful for the Lord Jesus, friends. Be thankful for the holy sufferings of Christ. Be thankful that your very life, your next breath, your peace, comes as a direct result of Christ Jesus. Be thankful that the very life inside you is Christ Jesus. Be thankful that the Son of God has overcome the world, the flesh, the devil, and is arisen uh, and ascended to the right hand of God. Be thankful and rejoice in the truth, friends. Read the scriptures, memorize the scriptures, walk in loving kindness, righteousness and holiness. These are the things, friends, that will keep you well in this current evil age. Find your niche. Find how you can serve others, friends. Encourage and support others with the miracle of WhatsApp. Telephone, there's always somebody to think. Well, friends, we are in the 28th chapter, and most enjoyable it has been too. Um, please do check out the other podcasts on the channel. There's now over 350. Uh, there's an entire series, 83 podcasts on the whole book of Jeremiah. I think there's 80 covering the whole book of Isaiah. Um, there's playlists covering the entire book of Proverbs and many of the other prophets as well. So there's lots and lots of content. So please do get involved. Check those out. Feel free to share them. Um, yeah, so Ezekiel 28. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus saith Adonai Yehovah. Thus says the Lord Jehovah. Because your heart is lifted up and you said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the heart of the seas, and you are a man and not God. And you set your heart as the heart of God. Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. Nothing secret is obscure for thee. By thy vase deem and thine understanding thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy tree assures. By thine great vase deem thy gadolsha shall. Thou hast by thine traffic increased thine riches and thine heat is lifted up because of thine riches. So, therefore, thus saith Vadonai Yehovah, the Lord Jehovah, because you set your heart as the heart of God, therefore, behold, I'll bring strangers upon you, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy vase to you. They shall tarnish your brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit. You shall die the deaths of those that are slain. In the heart of the seas. Will you then say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But you shall be a man, and not God, in the hand of him that pierceth thee. You shall die the deaths of the uncircumcised, by the hand of strangers, for... I have spoken it, says the Lord Jehovah. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of strange heirs. For I have spoken it, saith Adonai, Yehovah. If a divine Yehovah, the word of the Lord, came to me, saying, 
Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre, and say thus to him, Thus saith Vadonai Yehovah, the Lord Jehovah, Thou who sealest up the miasure of perfection, full of visdeem, and perfect in beauty, Thou vast in Eden, the garden of God, Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the chrysolite, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the carbuncle, and the emerald and gold. The workmanship of thy tambours and of thy pipes was in thee. In the day that thou was created, vert they prepared. Thou was the anointed covering cherub, and I had set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. You did walk up and down in the midst of stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thine ways from the day that thou wast created until unrighteousness was found in thee. By the abundance of thine traffic, they filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore have I cast thee as profane from the mountain of God. I have destroyed thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You've corrupted your visdeem by reason of thy brightness. I have cast thee to the ground. I have laid thee before kings that they may behold thee. By the multitude of thine iniquities, by the unrighteousness of thy traffic, thou hast profaned thy sanctuaries. I have brought forth a fire out of the midst of thee. It hath consumed thee. I have brought thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all those that behold thee. All they that know thee among the peoples shall be amazed at thee. Thou art become a terror and thou shalt never be any more. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set thy face towards Sidon, and prophesy against it, and say, Thus saith Adonai Yahovah, the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I am against thee, Sidon, and I will be glorified in the midst of thee, and they shall know that I am Jehovah when I shall have executed judgments in her and shall be hallowed in her. And I will send into her the pestilence and blood in her streets. The wounded shall fall in the midst of her by the sword upon her on every side, and they shall know that I am Jehovah. And there shall be no more a wounding sting for the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn among all that were round about them that despised them. And they shall know that I am the Lord Jehovah. There shall be no more a wounding sting for the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn among all that were round about them that despised them. And they shall know that I am the Lord Jehovah. Thus saith Adonai Yehovah, when I shall have gathered the house of Yashirel from the peoples among whom they scattered, and shall be hallowed in them in the sight of the nations, then shall they dwell in their land which I have given to my servant Jacob. They shall dwell in it safe, in safety. They shall dwell in it in safety. And shall build houses and plant vineyards, and they shall dwell in safety when I have executed judgments. 
upon all those that despise them round about them, and they shall all know that I am Jehovah their God. They shall dwell in safety. They'll build houses and plant vineyards, and they shall dwell in safety. When I've executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them, they shall know that I am Jehovah their God. So, there was once a very powerful nation called Tyre. In the previous podcast, we looked at that it was an amalgamation of nations um, connected for purposes of geopolitical power and influence and money, trade. Um, now, whenever you've got uh, military alliances and trade in finances, um, you also have other forms, uh, other things um, uh, namely cultural and societal uh, trends and norms uh, and when it comes to nations other than Israel when it comes to persons other than the Lord Jesus Christ that's really what Israel is Israel is the greatest type of Christ Jesus in the Bible and probably the most unknown <laughs> uh, but he, even a very simplistic understanding of Hebrew would tell you that the word Israel uh, is Yasher El. Yasher is upright, El is God, so it's simply upright God. So it's God having full expression in the person of the Son, the upright God. God of God, unto the Son the Father has said, Thy throne, O God, endureth forever and ever. For a scepter of uprightness is the scepter of thy kingdom. For thou hast loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore God thy God has anointed thee, the other gladness above thy fellows. So God the Father says to the Son, Thy throne, O God. It's a holy mystery, the mystery of God and Christ. So what you're really looking at here is the purity and beauty of, of Christ in and as Israel, God wanting full expression through a theocratic monarchy upon the earth. Uh, and indeed, that's what was enjoyed when David was king and will be enjoyed for a thousand years from Jerusalem, Israel, in the imminent future, when the Son of God, the Lord Jesus the Christ, rules the whole planet physically for a thousand years from the physical Jerusalem. That's, that's the imminent future of this planet. Now, these Tyre was an enemy of Israel. Uh, so God was angry with these nations that he had used to punish Israel. You see. So in the first instance, you're looking at God's wrath uh, against this godless prince of Tyre. Um, and later on in verse 12, it's the king of Tyre. So what this infers is that mortals do the bidding of the devil, uh, and the devil has influence over wicked humans, the prince of the power of the air that works in the sons of disobedience. So really what you're reading about here is God's wrath towards the devil and devilish nations that, that commit wickedry and promote wickedness. Because each man or each woman commends the lifestyle they lead. So if you go and talk to a drunkard, they'll want to, sooner or later, they'll suggest you have some alcohol with them. You know, if you go and talk to a sexual pervert, sooner or later, they'll commend their sexual perversion. You know, I spoke with someone that believes we're living in a under a dome, you know, like the old uh, snow shakers that you would get as gifts and souvenirs, where they like a little a little dome in the palm of your hand, you shake them, they've got full of water, and when you shake them, loads of little, what seem to be snowflakes fall down inside of the, the little dome. Well, there is many, probably over a million folk currently believe that God is keeping mankind under a dome and that we're actually on a flat earth under a dome. And I was speaking to one such person 10 days ago, lovely, lovely woman, Bible-believing woman, apart from she believes we live under a dome on a flat earth. And um, so obviously quite deluded, but very sincere. 
and is thankful for the atonement is a woman of prayer. You know, and that's the irony of it. A lot of persons that believe in the flat earth are, are quite committed Christians. That's the strange thing about it. Anyway, so um, persons that are deluded um, often delude others. That's the point. And uh, so God was angry against this prince of Tyre because he believed that he was God. In other words, he, he enjoyed exercising sovereignty. Uh, so God was angry with this ruler of, of this place called Tyre because he enjoyed deciding the fates of nations and his enemies, you see. Um, and it tells you that, that this man, I suppose, is a type of antichrist. He says, I am God. I sit in the seat of God, in the heart of the seas, and in brackets. You're a man, not God. I suppose it reminds me of the popes, you know. The popes, the, 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 you know, they they see themselves as as being another Christ, a replacement for Christ. You know, they are antichrist because it's not a true Christian organisation. A lot of superstition and idolatry. And the Roman Catholic system has shed the blood and tortured tens of thousands, down, particularly in the Middle Ages. You know, and they've never repented of that. Well, God requires that which is past. You see, and one of the things of uh, if you go to places like Turkey, for example, which is a largely Mohammedan and Islamic nation, uh, Erdogan, who's been the main man in Turkey for many, many years and continues to be, he he, see, he sees himself as God. He, he allows himself to be like venerated and worshipped. Indeed, a lot of these political rulers, they love they love the limelight. You know, they they love the thought of being um, venerated and worshipped. You know, you don't need to look too far to see that. Obama loved that. You know, and uh, Justin Trudeau, um, they all they all like this. You know, this kind of thing and, uh, to be venerated. Well, that's been going on for thousands of years. You see, and of course, the popes of Rome are nothing other than the, the continuation of the Roman emperor, you know, the Roman empirical system. They, like, like most empires, they realised they couldn't maintain their influence over vast swaths of geography, you see. So that was what happened to all empires, really. The British Empire, the Portuguese Empire, the French Empire, that's what happened to them all. They couldn't maintain control of, of vast lands in, in other parts of the world. They just couldn't do it. So eventually they had to diminish their influence, you see. And um, certainly when you when you look at, at these nations, that's what happened to them. So this prince of Tyre God was angry at him and he thought he was God. Um, and, and as I say, um, the Roman Empire, it, it, it maintained influence through by spiritual means. Catholicism is a mixture of superstition, paganism, idolatry, and Christianity. You know, uh, it's not true Christianity at all. Certainly not biblical Christianity, you see. And as I say, the, 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 the pop popery, the popish system, is a wicked system. Not necessarily for individual professing Catholics, which means virtually nil anyway. You know, um, but, but certainly the system is, is wicked. Um, I saw an announcement last week of this chap that calls himself the Pope now. And instead of declaring the Lord Jesus Christ, instead of declaring the blood atonement, the sovereignty of Jehovah Elohim, the authority of Christ Jesus, is waffling on about climate change or something. You see, what their agenda now is to garner support because they've come under a right drubbing in the last 20 years because of all the sexual perverts in the Catholic system, you know. And Ephesians talks about, and Colossians talks about forbidding men to marry, commanding them not to marry. Well, that's not normal. If a man or a woman chooses to remain single, then God can give them grace and power to remain chaste and holy. You know, a single person, so absolutely 100%. However, the normal state of play is for a man to have a woman and a woman to have a man, you see, for reasons that are laid out in Scripture elsewhere, principally lust and like, interfering with other people's wives or husbands, you see. 
um, because the command go forth and reproduce and fill the earth was given by God, you see, but lust has perverted that, you see. Um, anyway, um, so the, the Roman Catholic system, as I say, they're trying to garner support now, so they're trying to curry favour with all these eco-zealots that are under the deluded religion of climate change, you know, and that's what it is, it's a deluded religion. That's what climate change is. The same with politics. These political uh, entities, they're, they're all cultic cults, really. If you, you look at the Tory party, the Labour party, if you look closely, they're basically religious cults. That's what they are, you know. They have their hierarchy, the high priests, high priestesses, their systems, their doctrines, you know, certain things you can say, certain things you can't say, and you progress up the ladder. That's what it all is. You know, anyone you see in any kind of authority in these political parties in any country is because they've been busy uh, licking people's boots for years, you know, and saying the right thing. Anyway, um, God, God has a view to all these things, you see. So God pronounces judgment upon the king of Tyre. That's these wicked human leaders of these nations. Um, and also upon the devil, you see. So there's a doctrine here about the devil, you see, that you don't get anywhere else. And indeed, peculiarly, uh, in, in Ezekiel, you get doctrine about the doomed, deluded devil, you see. And it tells you here that using his wisdom, he got riches. What does that mean? Well, it means that the devil, through his wisdom, acquired uh, human beings to do his bidding. That's what that means. Uh, the devil, through his wickedry, influenced mankind to to do wickedness. You see, so from the divine perspective, when humans are tempted and do wickedry, uh, that is uh, like the devil gets rich, as you see through that. Understand? So, from one perspective, all these sexual perverts you see parading around the streets, trying to convince us to accept their sexual perversions norm normal um, they've managed to persuade the, the political and educational classes to to teach children now for, for 25 30 years in Britain and Europe although it's perfectly normal for a man to lie with a man which is an absolute abomination absolute wickedness you know and so so this kind of thing uh, is riches to the devil you see because it's, uh, it's perversion, you know, uh, it's, and, and it grieves Elohim Yavai, it grieves the Holy Spirit, you see. So the devil sees that as wealth and riches. And then the devil's heart is further lifted up because the devil set his heart as the heart of God. The devil wanted worship. The devil wants worship, but he can never have worship. We will see that the devil will die the deaths of everyone that's ever died over and over again in the lake of fire. This will be his punishment. This will be his torment for the sickness, suffering and sorrow of everyone that's ever walked this planet. That will be the devil's punishment, eternal suffering in the lake of fire. The fire so furious brimstonian capital punishment. Now, now, so, and it tells us that the devil's ongoing influence through, through educational systems and through government systems by his great wisdom, you see, he trafficked to increase his riches. So the devil has worked through these systems to, to try and twist mankind up into a hideous delusion. The Bible tells us that the devil has deceived the whole habitable world. El Elohim Yahavah rules the whole planet, friends. Mortals are creature possession. All flesh is subject. Mortals are simply the hand of Jehovah, the wicked his sword. Jehovah rules, Jehovah reigns, friends, make no mistake. 
all things are entirely subject to the Christ God. Therefore, thus says the Lord Jehovah, because you set your heart as the heart of God, and that's verse 6. You see, so there you have it. It's a revelation of mankind. And also, um, it's also a picture of what happened in eternity. Uh, the devil was very powerful, very beautiful, very wise, uh, very, very powerful creature in eternity in heaven and it tells us further in this chapter uh, about that but here we see that through his riches he increased in riches so in other words through his wisdom he was able to garner support amongst the other angels and they were attracted to him and this chapter gives us revelation that because of his lust and because of his desire for worship uh, uh, and uh, reverence, that he was able to traffic, which means to trade. And he became more proud, so he lost his beauty, he lost his wisdom and he lost his immortality and was cast down from heaven to earth, you see. And the scripture says the devil goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour because he's very angry because he knows his time is short, you see. Whereas the day spring from on high, the Lord Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, the son of the father's house, the son of the father's love, has come to bring light, love, liberty and abundant life. See, so the devil is death, Christ is life. The devil is curse, the Lord Jesus is blessings forever, the same yesterday and today and forever. So verse 6, not only is it talking about the rulers of Tyre and earthly rulers in governmental positions of authority, it's also talking about the devil, but it's also talking about mankind. Verse 6, 6 is the number of man. Human beings think they are God, but human beings are not God. Human beings are mortals, creature possessions, doubly owned by the Lord Jesus the Christ. Every human being is a possession, a purchased possession. You don't belong to yourselves. You've been bought with a price. Never glorify God in your body and be holy. So we see here, and that's what the devil said to the first man and woman, you'll be like God. In Genesis, the devil said, you'll be all right, you won't die, you'll be like God. You know, you'll have, you'll have the knowledge of good and evil and you'll be like God. Let me see. So God says, I'll bring strangers upon you, the terrible of the nations. They'll draw the swords against the beauty of your wisdom. They shall tarnish your brightness. So that's verse seven. So that's the divine response. Seven is the number of perfection and completion and entirety. So God's dealings against the devil and against the devil's servant is that God brings to nothing the work of devils. It's similar to Daniel 2, the Stone cut out of the mountain without hands that comes into the world, becomes a great mountain and fills the whole planet. Destroys everything uh, of devils and of men that is devilish. And, uh, and so it's, it's a judgment upon the devil. That's what all this is, you see. And as we saw in the previous podcast, in the ways of God, um, just before, I mean, at this moment in time, we are now on the uh, 7th of October, 2023. Uh, imminently, the doomed, deluded, devile is waiting to be chained and cast into the pitch darkness of the bottomless abyss for a thousand years because he's responsible 
for the sickness, suffering, sorrow and death of everyone that's ever walked this planet. Then he'll be released for a very brief time and then cast into the lake of fire. And this chapter tells us very clearly what the punishment will be. It tells us um, that he will die the deaths of the uncircumcised. There it is, verse 10. You shall die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I spoke, and it says, the Lord Jehovah. The word of Jehovah came to me a second time, saying, Take up a lamentation and say to the king of Tyre, Thus says the Lord Jehovah, You who seal the measure of perfection, full of these demon, perfect in beauty. So we see here that the power behind earthly rulers is, is an influence, is that of the devil to do wickedness. Whereas the saints do righteousness and keep judgment and justice and truth. But what's very interesting doctrinally in this chapter um, is, is that it tells you that the devil was in the Garden of Eden. Well, no surprise there to a student of scripture. However, in scripture, we, in most Christians, Christian thought is generally that the devil appeared somehow as a snake. And of course, that is true. However, in this chapter, it tells us um, that he was perfect in beauty. And every precious stone was his covering. The sardius, topaz, diamond, chrysolite, onyx, jasper and sapphire. The carbuncle, the emerald, the gold. The workmanship of thy tambours and of thy pipes was in thee. In the day that thou was created, but they prepared. So it's, it's very interesting to think that the devil used his wisdom. It tells you there. So he still had some of his wisdom when he was cast down to earth. He still had some understanding. And he managed to get humans to commit wickedness. But the son of God has overcome and has destroyed serpents and scorpions and has slain the monster in the sea. All things are rendered entirely subject to God, judicially, through the everlasting righteousness, the eternal redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is made wisdom, redemption, righteousness, holiness and power. With the increase of his peace and of the increase of his rule, there shall be no end. He doth rule upon David's throne, upholding righteousness. Our God shall accomplish this. He shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Of the increase of his reign and of the increase of his supremacy and sovereignty, there shall be no end. He doth rule upon King David's throne, upholding righteousness. How God shall accomplish this. So it tells you that he was upon the holy mountain of God. He did walk up and down in the midst of stones of fire. So there's quite a lot of revelation about God's presence. At the beginning of Ezekiel, we saw the wheels, uh, we saw the four living creatures before the throne of God. We saw the spirit of the wheels. Um, so there's a lot of revelation about heaven and eternity. There's also the stones of fire. Of course, Christ is the, uh, the stone with the seven eyes. The stone cut out of the mountain without hands. You can't quantify deity. You can't measure God. Those that are spiritual discern all things. Yet yeah, they themselves are discerned of nobody. There is neither counsel, purpose, nor understanding against Adonai Yahavar Elohim. Adonai Yahavar Elohim rules the whole planet, rules the whole universe. All mortals are subject, friends. Nothing moves on this planet 
without Jehovah Elohim. Now, tells you in verse 18, much more could be said about this chapter, friends. I could probably talk all day long on this chapter. God brings a fire out of the midst of the devil that consumes the devil. What could that be? Well, it's just the reality of righteousness and wickedness. That's what it is. A creature can never have fully the glory of God. Now, a creature having life itself knows something of the glory of God. Because Elohim, God is the source of all life, you see. Uh, and so the life in every creature is God. Now, that doesn't mean that life is God, but it does mean that, that God is the source of all life. So you can carefully say that there's one source of life, Elohim, is one of the Hebrew names of God, Elohim, H-A-I-I-E, is the Hebrew word for life. Adonai, I-I-E, Lord of life. Melech, I-I-E, King of life. Elohim, I-I-E, the God of life. Or you can simply say Elohim. You see, so one is the source of all life. You see. Now, let's have a look. There we are. Right. So, because of righteousness, holiness, and truth, God brings a fire out of the middle of the devil that consumes the devil. See, there's no counsel against the Lord. God brings the devil to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all those that see him. Those that know the devil among the peoples will be amazed at him. He shan't be any more. Now, the next one is Sidon, the last portion of this chapter. Son of man, set your face towards Sidon. Now, I always think it's very interesting, friends, to look at names in Scripture. And I talked about Ezekiel begins with the wheels and then later on the one wheel upon the earth, which is the entire dominical sovereignty of Jehovah Elohim. That's what the wheel signifies. This earth doesn't isn't run or belonging to human beings. <laughs> this earth doesn't belong to devils. This earth belongs to Elohim, Yahweh, to God, to Jehovah, to Jesus. Everything is entirely subject, friends. Everything. Christ Jesus has all power and authority in heaven and upon earth. Now, if you think of a snake, you could say a snake is side on, it's on its side, it's on its belly. And uh, this portion of the chapter is towards Sidon. Uh, you know, you could also think of it as Sidon. Don, Don is where we get is Adon, Adonai, Don, it means a ruler. You know, upon earth you talk about the Matthew Dons, you know, well, a Don, Adonai, his master, his lord, you see. Um, so, side Don, it also means that, that God's side at the works of the devil concerning mankind, side Don. But it also speaks of the devil being side on because he's lazy and rebellious and wicked. It also speaks of the fact that the devil cannot be in God's presence properly because this fire that's within him will just completely destroy him because of righteousness, because of holiness, because of truth. You see? So God says, set your face towards side on. So it's actually an address towards the devil. And once again, friends, the devil is not given a name anywhere in the Bible. He's not given a name anywhere in the Bible. And someone will say, well, what about Lucifer? Well, the word Lucifer doesn't appear in the Bible. Oh, it does, I'll show you. No, no, it doesn't. The Bible is written in Hebrew and Greek with a tiny bit of Aramaic. Lucifer is a Latin word that describes someone that carries the light or light bearer. It's not a name. Um, and so, um, so the, the, the devil has lots of descriptives. He's a liar, a murderer, a thief. He is Sidon and he is Tyre. Okay. Um, and so God says, I'm against you, Sidon, and I'll be glorified in the midst of you. 
They shall know that I am Jehovah when I have executed judgments in her and shall be hallowed in her. So that's a reference to woman. Woman in scripture speaks of all mankind, speaks of Israel, also speaks of the Lamb's wife. Uh, so the great mystery of things, you see, friends, God is in eternity and God is in time. So when you uh, understand the bigger picture, friends, God started with one man and from that one man came one woman. And then from the Lord Jesus came his wife, the lamb's wife, out of his spear-pierced side. He was delivered, and blood and water came out of his side. He thrust the giant Roman spear into his side and through his liver. Christ was delivered into death, that you all may be delivered into life eternal. Um, Christ has abolished death, hell and the grave, has brought in eternal righteousness and is uh, the Lord and Saviour of all mankind, the only sovereign on the whole planet. No. So it's a very interesting chapter, and we have this phrase quite frequently, they shall know that I am Jehovah. There won't be any wounding sting for the house of Israel. So you think of, the serpents in the wilderness when the Israelites were grieving Elohim Yahweh, grieving the Holy Spirit uh, in the uh, wilderness on their way from Egypt to Canaan. God sent snakes amongst them that bit them. And that would have been awful. In the, in the hot country to be bitten by snakes, a very serious business. And uh, Moses had to make an image of this snake uh, out of bronze and attach it to the top of his staff. So when Moses held his staff up with this bronze snake on the top of it, whoever looked to that was healed. Well, that's the type of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. Christ became a curse that men may become a blessing. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He bare our own sins in his body upon the tree. See, for all of thee. He assuredly does. Now, so yes, so Christ became sin that men may become righteousness. It's a divine and blissful and blessed exchange that mortals become the righteousness of God in Christ. They become the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one body. At this moment, the Son of God is every man, woman and child upon this orb living and dead the lord of the living and the lord of the dead yes friends it's a title of christ in scripture so when the bible talks about a wounding sting it speaks about the influence of the doomed deluded devil towards mankind you see uh through mortals so this is anti-semitism we read in Revelation 12 that the, the great wings of the eagle carried the woman into the wilderness. That's the United States uh, established Israel in 1948 through the UN as a nation again. The great wings of an eagle, of course, the only nation with the great wings as its insignia is the United States of America. And then we saw that the earth helped the woman and the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed all the vile bile of the devil, which is anti-Semitism, you see, wicked right against the Jews. Um, you can read about that in Revelation 12. Well, there won't be any more wounding sting. There won't be any anti-Semitism or anyone able to do anything against the Jews for that thousand years, which is imminent now. So the salvation is of the Jews. Jesus is a Jew. You see, salvation is of the Jews. Any mortals that are not Jewish by descent are grafted into the vine. And it's the root that supports the branches, not the branches, the root. It's the mystery of it. Now, so there won't be any more a wounding sting for the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn. So a grieving thorn, that would be sort of uh, any... Uh, 
upset evil spirits that still try and bother people. That's all stopped now. There won't be any more grieving thorns, you know. I'm currently reading the Song of Songs in my own time again. I'm reading each chapter two or three times and uh, about a third, halfway through. And uh, it says, the Lord Jesus, the rose of Sharon, the lily amongst the valleys, the lily amongst the thorns. It's quite unusual to think of because, of course, lilies don't have thorns, but the lily amongst the thorns. It speaks of Christ and the saints in a scene of contrariety and yet prospering in loving kindness and truth speaks of the capacity for Jehovah Elohim to sovereignly save his sheep, to sovereignly preserve individuals in their circumstances. The great goodnesses of Jehovah. Well, there won't be any more wounding stings or grieving thorns. And everyone that despised the Jews, they shall all know that I am the Lord Jehovah. Thus says the Lord Jehovah, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered, and shall be hallowed in them in the sight of the nations. Then shall they dwell in their land which I have given to my servant Jacob. They shall dwell in it in safety, and shall build houses and plant vineyards. They shall dwell in safety when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them. They shall know that I am Jehovah, their God. So, very much millennial in character, this chapter, friends. Uh, it has the destruction of the doomed, deluded, devile. Um, him being brought down to the pit, which is the bottomless abyss for a thousand years, which is imminent. Uh, to pitch darkness chained. And he'll there, he'll die the deaths of those that are slain. So you see the bit of doctrine there, friends, which we almost missed, that not only will the devil die the deaths of the uncircumcised in the lake of fire forever, but in the thousand years in the bottomless pitch darkness of the abyss, before the lake of fire, there he will die the deaths of those that have been killed. So everyone that's ever been murdered, the devil will die the deaths of those humans that have been murdered. And he will die those deaths in the pitch darkness of the bottomless abyss. Thus says Jehovah. Will the devil then say, oh, I'm God, I'm God? I don't think so. He will be a man and not God in the hand of him that pierceth thee. So to think how much pleasure... The devil took when Christ was pierced by that giant Roman spear in his side as he hung dead upon the tree for all of thee. Well, there's coming a moment in the near future when the devil will be pierced. God will pierce him and he will die the deaths of the uncircumcised. For I have spoken it, says the Lord Jehovah. So, yeah, it's quite a, a bit of precious truth in this chapter, friends. Yeah. Yes, so certainly millennial in character and all that takes place just before the thousand years of righteousness, holiness and goodness in every place upon this orb. The stench, the foul air will no longer be upon or above the earth. It will be in the bottomless of this. And righteousness, peace and joy and well-being, a time of no war, there won't be any more warfare upon the earth for a thousand years, friends, imminently. They shall dwell in safety. When I've gathered the house of Israel, and of course that's been going on now for 70 years, they call it the Al-I-Yar, A-L-I-Yar, al is a Hebrew word for God, Al, Elohim, Allah, Allah, Elohei, Al Ayah, All Ayah. Israel shall return to me, says the Lord. The Aliyah is the return of the Jews to Israel. It's been going on for an entire generation, friends, for over 75 years. All the Lord says, 
When I have gathered the house of Israel from the peoples amongst whom they scattered, I shall be hallowed in them. Thus says the Lord, I shall be hallowed amongst the saints, I shall be hallowed amongst the Jews, and I shall be hallowed amongst the heathen. All things serve me, all things live through me, for me, with me, by me, and all things in the heavens, upon the earth, and beneath the earth serve me. And let everything say glory in my house. They shall dwell in it in safety. They'll build houses, plant vineyards, and dwell in safety. When I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them, they shall all know that I am Jehovah, their God. We'll be back soon with the podcast, friends. Um, stay strong in the scripture, in prayer, under the blood, in the spirit, declaring the full name, the Lord Jesus the Christ, King of the universe.